Welcome to my latest 2023 NFL preview video. Today I am breaking down the Buffalo Bills and here's how my preview videos work. I start off with three things I like about the Bills, followed up by three things I don't like. Then I go over to yearly win total odds, break down the schedule, and at the end I give you my betting recommendation on the Buffalo Bills. Let's kick this off with the first thing I like about the Buffalo Bills. This should be no surprise, it's Josh Allen. No quarterback is more physically gifted than Allen. If he wanted to, in my my opinion, he could play tight end in the NFL. He led the Bills with seven rushing touchdowns and was second on the team with 762 rushing yards. In my opinion, no quarterback in the NFL has a stronger arm, and being a Chiefs fan, it's hard to say Allen does anything better than Mahomes. It's practically illegal here in Kansas City, but Allen's arm strength is unlike anything I've ever seen. While I'm not going to tell you that Josh Allen isn't without flaws, no quarterback has more upside and just raw potential than than Josh Allen. The second thing I like about the Bills is they are loaded with pass rushers. As I am making this video, Boogie Basham was traded to the Giants, but the Bills still have their top six leading sackers from last year and added Leonard Floyd, who teamed with Von Miller in L.A. to help the Rams win a Super Bowl. Miller will miss at least the first four weeks of the season, but they still have Shaq Lawson, 2021 first-round pick Greg Rousseau, and 2022nd round pick A.J. Espinenza, plus the before-mentioned Leonard Floyd. When Miller returns to the Bills, they will have an extremely talented and deep group of pass rushers. The third thing I like about the Bills is their draft. When I say draft, I specifically mean first First round pick Dalton Kincaid and second round pick Osiris Torrance. Both players were two of my biggest draft crushes and will have an immediate impact on the Bills this year. Kincaid is a tight end in name only and would put up big numbers in this offense. For you fantasy guys, draft or trade for Kincaid if you can because he is best, he is very special. Torrance is starting at right guard and will be a force. It will not surprise me if Torrance ends up with multiple Pro Bowls when his career is over. He could be a Pro Bowler as a rookie. I think he is that good. To recap the three things I like about the Bills, Josh Allen, multiple pass rushers, and the Bills draft. Now before I go over the three things I don't like, make sure you smash that like button. And if you haven't already, Already hit that subscribe button it really helps me out when you subscribe to the channel now three things about the Buffalo Bills I don't like the first thing I don't like is the Bills losing defensive coordinator and assistant head coach Leslie Frazier since Sean McDermott has taken over as head coach in 2017 he has had Frazier as the defensive coordinator and assistant head coach in 2021 the Bills gave up the fewest points in the National Football League and last year they gave up the second fewest there is no possible way the Bills are better off without Frazier than and with him. There's no decision on whether Frazier is coming back to Buffalo or coaching period, but it was a surprise when he stepped away this offseason. We'll see how good McDermott does without Frazier's help. The second thing I don't like about the Bills is that they play in the brutal AFC East. I've used this as a don't like reason for all four AFC East teams and for good reason. This division can say that it's the best in the NFL. The Jets, Dolphins, and Patriots all made improvements to their team this offseason the Bills are the only AFC East team I think that took a step back mostly because of the loss of Leslie Frazier. Don't get me wrong, the Bills may still repeat as AFC East champs, but the road is much more difficult this year than last year. The final thing I don't like is how the Bills lost in the playoffs last year. What you're looking at is part of my division round picks video for 2022. And then you can see I picked the Bills to win. I thought it would be a really close game with Cincinnati having three backup offensive linemen ended up dominating the Bills. Two things really bothered me about this game. First is with three backup offensive linemen, the Bengals ran for 172 yards. And second, how Diggs behaved throwing a childlike temper tantrum on the sidelines. I never would have expected a 10 to 27 loss in this game. And I've seen this kind of a loss affect the team going forward. You combine this loss with a brutal division and losing longtime defensive coordinator Leslie Frazier and you you have a really steep uphill climb in 2023. Now let's go over to yearly win total odds and break down the Bills schedule. The magic number is 10 and a half, but you might be able to find 11 wins somewhere because everybody loves the over.
over. If you don't understand what I'm talking about, check out my yearly win total odds tutorial video listed here. Now, let's look at the Bills schedule. This schedule is a tough one. It starts off with Monday night in New York versus the division rival Jets. Week two is the home opener versus the Raiders before you travel to Washington week three. It does look like it's three straight home games, but week five is against Jacksonville in London. Week seven, you travel to New England. Week nine at Cincinnati and week 12 is at Philly and these stand out as they are three very tough road games. You have a late bye week 13, but the NFL did not do you any favors because you travel to Kansas City week 14. Let's go over the schedule before the bye and break it down in the six two-game halves. The six-game stretch to start the season is key. You can't play catch-up with this schedule, so I believe a fast start is important. I think you've got to win your home opener against the Raiders and beat the Giants and then win one of the division games either against the Jets on the road or Miami at home. If you start anything less than 3-3 three and three to start the season, you're in trouble. The next six weeks, I believe you have to win the primetime home games against Tampa Bay and Denver. And if you beat the Jets week one, you can lose week 11, but you can't get swept by the Jets. And I think you've got to win at least one of the three road games, but New England, Cincinnati, and Philly are all very tough opponents. This would take you to either six or seven wins before the bye. After the bye, none of these are easy games. You could win one of the home games and one on the road, but getting the 10 wins is going to be extremely difficult. The magic number is 10 and a half, and you might be able to find 11 wins somewhere with heavy action on the over. Now, I don't recommend betting on the Bills because I definitely see them taking a step back from 13 and 3 last season, but how far back is the question? If I had to place a bet, I would take under 10 and a half at plus 130, which is what DraftKings has as I am making this video. It's not a popular opinion, but I don't see 11 wins on this schedule. You can check out every NFL preview on the playlist listed here, and tomorrow I am previewing the Cincinnati Bengals, so I hope to see you back tomorrow.